Welcome to Cocktail Hour. I'm Andy. And I'm the Rev. Before we get started on this enterprise, let's make a drink. Ah, better. We started this podcast initially to babble on about books and fanfic we've read recently. That, of course, progressed to, why don't we chat about what's going on in the Lesbitarian community? Then another thought, well, why don't we move forward at some point and have guests? Maybe a few brave authors or readers. Cool, huh? So let's get started. With this inaugural broadcast, we're going to chat about Cooking on High by Creme Brulee, then segue to Seduction of Moxie by Colette Moody. So we're going to start out with Cooking on High from uh, Creme Brulee, which is by far one of my very favorite fan fictions. I recommend it all the time. The basic premise of the story is we have French, who is a world-class French chef, who has been accused of murder. She and one of her employees, Violet Fry Spark, work together to try and figure out who actually committed the murder. In the meantime, we have a slew of really entertaining characters, a very well-written mystery, and a lot of fun. It's got great, great humor. It's it's a true Xena Uber. We have the we have French, the Xena character, who is a despicable, devious, cutthroat French chef who will do anything to come out on top in any situation that she's in. Uh, we have Violet, who's who French immediately nicknames Fry, uh, much <laughs> much to Violet's uh, <laughs> displeasure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my name is Violet. No, mm-hmm. you're Fry. Fry. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, Fry comes to work for, for uh, French, and, you know, French is, is in the midst of crisis. You know, who is she really? Can she really walk the good path and give up all of the, the her, her previous uh, misdeeds? And, and, man, it's hard for her. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting, too, because French likes to torture her employees. <laughs> And others, mm-hmm. but she's she's still very protective of her employees. But like, she's the only one that gets to be, you know, <laughs> the abuser, if you will. I love um, so, that. Yeah, she's uh, she's quite the character. Um, she's not really. I was really surprised at in, toward the end of the story when she actually got her ass kicked, which I just wouldn't expect at that point, because I, I would think that she would show more Xena like behavior, no, not like the Xena going through the gauntlet crap. But, but, uh, yeah, it, it was, um, she was a very entertaining character. Mm-hmm. What was the detective's name? Dewey? Was that his name? Okay, and she, this was the Joxer character. And, uh, I like, uh, there was one point where he's trying to infiltrate the restaurant and he's got a, a penciled in French, you know, mustache and he's speaking with this horrible French <laughs> accent. No, I'm the waiter. <laughs> it was good. I tell you, I, I just, I, I did. I, um, I really laughed out loud several times in this story. She paints a great, a great picture. I mean, it, there, there were throughout the entire story. You know, you you have the image in your head. You've got that 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 movie rolling in in your head, and you can see. And you know, you're already so familiar with how um, you know how how Violet and French look, and you know you have you have Violet's family who who in and of themselves could be a separate story. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got her brother Joe. Mm-hmm. You know, her her parents, who are the hippie, vegan, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, social activists who who think that the worst thing that Violet can do is work in a restaurant where they sell meat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you remember, remember that one scene where where uh, they foist uh, their vegan food or try to foist <laughs> their vegan food on friends? <laughs> yeah, she goes to apologize. That's awesome. I think you had a line in one of your – it's one of my favorite lines too uh, that, that it, it's Violet, uh, Violet's mother is talking. Do you have that? I do. This is the direct quote from the story. What have I told you? 
to change, you have to be willing to put other people's needs before your own in order to serve the community at large. She's a self-centered egomaniac who wouldn't know the greater good if it jumped out of her stock pot and bit her. And if it did, she'd kill it and serve it as a special. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it kind of like says it all. I mean, that, that sense of humor is just permeated throughout the story. It's it's really good. It's um, it's it's a I it like I said, it's one of my favorites. You know, I've read it uh, at least four times. And I guarantee you, I will read it again. It's you know when I'm when I'm feeling kind of crappy and I just want a good laugh, I'll read this one. I'll read um, Alias Smith and Jones, um, which I don't know if you're familiar with, but it's a like a, a spoof on evangelical. I, I try. Yeah, is that the one where one of the characters' name is Dixie? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tried to read it. A couple things. Um, it just was a little too out there initially for me, and the fact that my grandmother's name was Dixie, so it kind of like uh, the whole thing for me. So, <clears throat> yeah, no, no, no. That I, one I just, didn't work for you, huh? Nah, I could, if you really are in a, a, a low place or a down moment or having a crap day, pick up this story. It's free. Yeah. And read it because it is. It's very good. The humor is just great. It, um, the sarcasm, the quips are in overabundance, and and that is such a good segue, I think, to um, call it Moody's piece, The Seduction of Moxie. Absolutely. The interesting thing about reading these two stories is that uh, both you and I thought that this whole whole body of work was call it Moody mm-hmm. <laughs> because cooking. On high, had, it's like call it Moody Light. And uh, if, if you, the listener, get a chance to read both of these, I would be interested in what you think. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Colette, I asked Colette because you know I got I'm ballsy, so I asked her. I said, "Did you, you know, did you have a pseudonym and write under the name of Creme Brulee?" And and for the sake of our audience ears, I will not tell you exactly what <laughs> Colette thought uh, of the name Creme Brulee as a pseudonym. But she said no, she hadn't read it, and uh, that was not her. But now that um, you and I had talked about it so much, she wanted to go back and read it, uh, or go and read it. And um, she said she was going to do that. <clears throat> but I don't think she's really had a chance to read it because she just did her uh, finished her edits for the newest book that she's got coming out. And I, I'm not sure when it's coming out. But, uh, yeah, so she's, she said she'd read it. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm really interested in what she thinks of it. But her book, The Seduction of Moxie, is, I think, the second book that she wrote. Uh, her first was The Sublime and Spirited Voyage of Original Sin. Uh, that was a, a serious piece of work, but it did have her sense of humor come out oh, yeah. to, to play, but not nearly as much. It but, wasn't, you know, it wasn't, uh, it had a lot of humor in it, I thought, but it was a completely different kind of humor. Seduction of Moxie is just totally raunchy <laughs> and, you know, and very, you know, very dirty. Original Sin, like you said, it, it did, it was a bit more serious. You know, it had more serious themes in it, I think. Yeah, um, yeah it, you know, it, that was good too. Yeah. Well, for our listeners, the Seduction of Moxie is a period piece. And let me tell you, I'm a ho. For period pieces. I love them. This is a period piece that uh, happens in the 30s in New York City. I decided that I'm going to read a little blurb on the back of the book, and then we can talk about it, because I know I'll just leave something out. Anyway, <clears throat> the story opens up or takes place in New York City, and as the Rev rightly reminded me earlier, that it's New Year's Eve. It's um, going to be 1931. Uh, when Rye Broadway actress Violet London and her hard-drinking cohorts venture into a speakeasy the night before she is to board a train for Hollywood, she is floored by sassy blonde singer Moxie Vallette. As Violet introduces Moxie to an assortment of bootleg liquor, cross-dressers, and sex shows, she vows to find a way to see her again. Moxie is fascinated by Violet in a thrilling and unfamiliar way, and the ensuing evening of Bonmont's shameless flirtation and illicit revelry is unlike anything she has ever experienced. From Manhattan to Los Angeles, both women's lives are turned upside down by separation, unscrupulous motion picture studio executives, self-serving agents, eccentric celebrities, and the collection of hedonistic reprobates that are, that are their closest friends. In the beginning, all our characters meet when... Violet and Will 
go to a nightclub and hear Moxie singing. And they're so spellbound, enjoy it so much, they invite her over to their table after her sets. The poor thing doesn't drink, but she gets plied full of alcohol and winds up going to these crazy <laughs> places. That's, that's one way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> They're not flop houses. What does call it call them in the book? I can't remember. Uh, um, I, I don't recall. They're, they're essentially house parties, yeah, you know, yeah. at two-fingered Maybe. flossies. <laughs> that was my favorite one. Oh, lordy. I'm just going to say, mm. asshole, you know? The guy that could do shit with his asshole. <laughs> that made me stop and go, Whoa. Smoky Bender. Oh, is that, <laughs> that was Smoky Bender. Right? Yeah, that's right. I knew I needed this. to go to Cafe Press so I could, so I could <laughs> catch up on my. Okay, listeners, go to Colette Moody's website, and she has a link there to her Cafe Press uh, store. Read the book first, then go buy her shit. Because it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. It, it's just fantastic. It is. It God, is. I love that fucking book. <laughs> that is the best. I, I wrote two notes that I wanted to read uh, for this cast, and they are a couple of my favorite scenes. I mean, almost the entire book is my favorite scene, if you mm-hmm. will. It's just it's nonstop great. But <laughs> here's one line I really love. If you think you're going to get stared at here, sister, you're sadly mistaken. You could sodomize a monkey right in this room, and all you get from these folks will be pointers. <laughs> <laughs> that, dear listeners, is just a taste. <laughs> this is a taste. And one more. One more. Moxie has a really self-serving cad of uh, – you know where I'm going with that. Yeah. A cad of a manager. And – all these little twists and turns happen, and ultimately he keeps Moxie and Violet apart on a train ride. The train her. ride was fabulous. Oh, it was great. And in one part, Will, she decides to spike his food with something that gives him the shits <laughs> during the latter half of the train ride. And it's just obnoxious. And he still, regardless, even though he's running to the bathroom every 10 minutes to avoid his bowels, he's farting up the joint. He don't care if it's offending everybody else in the room. He will keep them apart. Oh, yeah. He's, he's hell-bent on keeping them apart. <laughs> this is where the other line comes in. She's, she's reacting to coming into this room after he's been, you know, ca- you know, just passing wind. And she says, by all that's holy, man. Take that somewhere else. Will put her hand over her nose. That's not a natural smell. It's like a mixture of brimstone, gardenia, and despair. <laughs> <laughs> this, I gotta tell you, this book has got to be the hands down funniest, filthiest thing I have ever had the pleasure to read. Amen, sister. <laughs> I mean, it was. From the moment I got to I just read the first page, I was laughing, and I did not stop until the end. It don't, was just good. Don't forget about little Clitty. Oh yeah, uh, Violet has a um, a little terrier, a little lap terrier, <laughs> and it's a male dog, and she's named the dog Clitoris, and she calls it Clitty for short, which of course just provides so much great spunky little dialogue. Uh, about this, the dog's name is just, <clears throat> and, and jokes based on the dog's name is just, it's just hilarious. Do you remember why he was called Clitty? Something about, he has a beard. And he likes being stroked all day being... long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Clitty knew a lot of little fun tricks like shitting in people's shoes and things like that, didn't he? Yeah. Or am I mad? I don't, I'm like, pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. It was his social commentary on being ignored, I think, when mm. he was trying to put food in the dining car on the train. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that I was nearly fired from my job for quoting Will uh, when she talks about she'd rather shit a hairbrush then do whatever it was that that they were asking. I, I went in. I had just finished the book. I'm sitting in a meeting with this very, very Christian woman and someone else who knows me pretty well. 
and they are asking me for something, and I just look them both right in the face, and I said, you know what? I'd rather shit a hairbrush. <laughs> you see with a straight face? And I did. And, you know, as soon as I, I saw their reaction, I said, oh, damn it, I cannot read Colette before I come to meetings. Yeah, that's a bad idea. You could have saved yourself and said something like, oh, gosh, that was my inner voice coming out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <clears throat> i mean i just I, I i just have never read anything quite like this in my life it was just really good jam-packed with hilarious one-liners you know you can pick that book up at any point open it up at any point and mm-hmm. there will be something on that page that will make you laugh out loud it's i true. guarantee it guarantee it uh, we don't have anything to give you if you prove us wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that's almost 100% <laughs> accurate. Great story. It's hilarious. Uh, I believe I believe uh, I put it as hilariously filthy. I mm-hmm. think it, I think it was, um, which Colette enjoyed. Yeah, and, yeah. She said you know, that's what she was going for. With a with a name like Cocktail Hour, <laughs> you know we'll be able to get her come on and talk to us for a little bit. Oh, yeah, I'm hoping. <laughs> Spend the money, get an ebook, get one in print, whatever you do, you've got to get this book. Absolutely. I, I agree 100%. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully maybe we'll have Colette on and she'll tell us how she liked Cooking on High. You know, I would like, I would actually like to know that. Do you know, I, w- I was speaking with a, a mutual friend and I had mentioned to her that you and I both felt that creme brulee and colette moody had very similar styles and senses of humor and she disagreed she really? she didn't feel she didn't feel that creme brulee was on the same uh the same level um as far as uh humor mm-hmm. and and well filth the, as <laughs> as colette but but you know the, reflecting back on the things that we had talked about over the last several months talking about these things you, I, I still think that could have that that creme brulee is very much a colette moody light and i <laughs> creme brulee may be really pissed off if we knew who the hell she was and you know if she would come out of the woodwork but you know this show isn't going to come out in time for uh the original broadcast however Colette Moody is going to be on Lars Alinsky's, uh, I think it's Blog Talk Radio. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, by the way, we couldn't get on because you have to have a clean show, and that's just not going to happen <laughs> with us. <laughs> so anyway, if you miss uh, the original, which you will, so this show will come out too late for the original broadcast of Colette Moody on Lara Zelinsky's show, but you can always go to iTunes and download it. So if you're interested... That's what you need to do. She has, Laura Zelensky has a, a, just about every week, if not every two weeks, she has, uh, she interviews an author and talks about their craft um, and whatever latest books that they have out. And uh, she has a little chat room so that you can actually sign in. It's, you know, it's a free service. Sign up, sign in. And um, she fields questions from people that are listening and relays them to the author's. And sometimes the authors actually sign in, and you can chat with them through the chat room while they're still talking. So it's it's pretty neat. Uh, she's got a really good setup going on. Um, I, we'll I, put, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. <laughs> we'll go ahead and put uh, her information on our show notes so that uh, you guys can uh, check it out. A couple of near and dear um, sites to my heart. Les Fick Reviews and Fan Fick Reviews. You want to talk a little bit more about that, Miss Rev? Yeah. So I run a, uh, a couple of review sites, one for fan fiction and one for published lesbian fiction. Even though I started them both out, the fan fiction review site is really uh, being run by a woman um, named UK. Um, and she's just taken that right over, and I'm so happy that she has because I've been super hella busy reading tons and tons of uh, books trying to get the Lesbian Fiction Review site off the ground. So, you know, you can check those out. We'll have links to all the stuff that we've talked about in the show notes, and we also have a, uh, a blog spot site 
where you can find the podcast and you can get uh, additional information about the shows and the things that we're reading and I don't know, whatever else we decide to put up there because it's all really brand new. So if you have some ideas of what, what about what you would like to see or you would like uh, us to talk about or you want to be a guest or whatever, let us know. Um, you can reach us at cocktailhour.show at gmail.com. Um, you can find us at the blog spot and, um, that's, uh, what is that again? I think it's, <laughs> you didn't ask me. <laughs> man, I, you know, it, it, it's so hard to try and get the same name for an email and, and the blog spot. So I think the blog spot is uh, cocktailhourshow.blogspot.com. Yeah, but we'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, it'll all be there. The review sites you can um, you can get to it's lesficrev l e z dot blogspot dot com or fanficrev dot blogspot dot com. Um, and if uh, I'm sure you'll be able to find plenty of stuff that that you haven't heard of before that you might want to read through there. Um, you can always catch us on Facebook too, but, uh, this is the, this is the new thing and, and we're kind of excited about it. Dear listeners, why don't you, uh, be sure to send us, uh, an email or, and let us know how you like the show, uh, any, any suggestions you'd like to make. I mean, we are thinking about guests at some future point. We're thinking about, uh, whether they'd be authors if they're brave enough to come on here. <laughs> hmm. Um, or even just readers. I mean, there's got to be some ham bones out there that want to make their opinions known. I mean, look so, at us. Yeah, look at us. <laughs> rising and babbling, and um, I hope you had as much fun as we did. I need another cocktail, damn it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go do. All right, <laughs> thank you all. See you until next time. Until next time. 